This is Laplace transforms, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the properties of the Laplace transform. These properties will help us simplify computations and also to help us use the Laplace transform to solve IVPs. So these properties will help simplify computations and help solve IVPs. Okay, so let's look at the translation in S in this theorem. If the Laplace transform L of F of S is equal to capital F of S exists for S greater than alpha, then the Laplace transform of E to the AT multiplied by F of T of S is equal to F of S minus A. And of course, this is for S greater than alpha plus A. And the Laplace transform of the derivative, we have f of t as a continuous function on 0 to infinity, and f prime of t be piecewise continuous on 0 to infinity with both of exponential order alpha. Then for s greater than alpha, we have the Laplace transform of f prime of s is equal to s multiplied by the Laplace transform of f of s minus f of 0. So basically what we've done is we have had our Laplace transform replace differentiation with respect to t. So here we are replacing differentiation with respect to t with multiplication by s. So let's go ahead and see how converting a, a differential equation into an algebraic equation will help us. Before we do that, let's look at two more theorems. The first theorem is the transform of higher order derivatives. So we have our function and its higher derivatives all the way to n minus one derivative be continuous on zero to infinity. And we will let the nth derivative of f with respect to t be piecewise continuous on zero to infinity with all these functions of exponential order alpha. Then for s greater than alpha, the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of s is equal to s to the nth power multiplied by the Laplace transform of f minus s to the n minus 1 power multiplied by f of 0 minus s to the n minus 2 power multiplied by f prime of 0 minus and so forth all the way down to the n minus 1th derivative of 0. The derivatives of the Laplace transform theorem looks like this. Let f of s equal the Laplace transform of f and assume that f of t is piecewise continuous on 0 to infinity and of exponential order alpha. Then for s greater than alpha, we have a Laplace transform of t to the power of n multiplied by f of t equal to negative 1 to the nth power multiplied by the nth derivative of capital F with respect to s. So basically what we're saying is that this derivative here of capital F is also a Laplace transform of some function t. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and try a few of these examples. In our first example, we're going to determine the Laplace transform of this function shown here. We will be using table 7.1, so we will use the brief table of Laplace transforms. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. We will use the linearity of the Laplace transform to come up with, and let's go ahead and write the Laplace transform of 2t squared e to the negative t minus t plus the cosine of 4t, that's our f of t of s is equal to, and let's go ahead and use our linearity properties, 2 times the Laplace transform of t squared e to the negative t of s, see if I can fix that just a little bit, minus the Laplace, Laplace transform of t of s plus the Laplace transform of the cosine of 4t of s. Okay. So now we'll be using our table of um, Laplace transforms. And here we have two multiplied by, and this is two divided by S plus one, all cubed, minus one over S squared, plus s over s squared plus 4 squared. So here we have 4 over s plus 1, all cubed, minus 1 over s squared plus s over s squared plus 16. And of course, this is valid for s greater than 0. Let's look at our next example. This time f of t is t minus 1 to the fourth power. We'd like to use our linearity principle, so let's go ahead and say that t minus 1 to the fourth, and we'll go ahead and show uh, what that's equal to. t to the fourth minus 4t cubed plus 6t squared minus 4t plus 1. So we will be finding the Laplace transform of t minus 1 to the fourth power of s. And let's go ahead and use our uh, linearity. That's the Laplace transform of t to the fourth of s minus 4 times the Laplace transform of t cubed of s plus 6 multiplied by the Laplace transform of t squared of s minus, go ahead and put that right there so that I can <clears throat> continue on. So we're here at my uh, plus six, then we have minus four multiplied by the Laplace transform of T of S plus the Laplace transform of 1 of s. So we see that now we come up with from our table that the Laplace transform of t to the fourth is going to be 4 factorial divided by s to the fifth and then we have minus 4 multiplied by and then the Laplace transform of t cubed is 3 factorial divided by s to the fourth plus 6 multiplied by 2 factorial over s cubed minus 1 fa oops minus 4 multiplied by 1 factorial over s squared plus 
1 over s. And we'll be able to simplify that a little bit. Here we have 24 divided by s to the fifth minus 4 multiplied by 6 over, and let me just use a dot there, s to the fourth plus 12. Again, let's just go ahead and combine these. That's minus 24 over s to the fourth plus 12 over s cubed minus 4 over s squared plus 1 over s. And that is, of course, for s greater than 0. Moving on to the next example, we are determining the Laplace transform of this function, 1 minus e to the negative t all squared. Let's go ahead and square that binomial, and we come up with 1 minus 2 e to the negative t plus e to the negative 2t. So now we say that we are looking for the Laplace transform of 1 minus 2e to the negative t plus e to the negative 2t of s. I don't know if I had put that. Yes, I did. And that is going to be equal to The Laplace transform of 1 of s minus 2 multiplied by the Laplace transform of e to the negative t of s plus the Laplace transform of e to the negative 2t of s. And now, using the uh, table of Laplace transforms, we have that this is equal to 1 over s minus 2 multiplied by 1 over s plus 1 plus 1 divided by s plus 2. So we can simplify that as 1 over s plus 2 over s plus 1 plus 1 divided by s plus 2. And all of this is for s greater than 0. Okay, let's take a look at our next example. We're looking for the Laplace transform of this function, t e to the 2t multiplied by the cosine of 5t. So here we are going to use our um, Laplace transform uh, table, and you can see that we have the Laplace transform of t e to the 2t cosine of 5t, and that's equal to the Laplace transform of t multiplied by e to the 2t cosine of 5t of s. And now we are going to use this theorem of the derivatives of the Laplace transform. So here we have t to the first power multiplied by f of t right now. And then we are going to use uh, this formula here. So we will have negative 1. Of course, our n is 1. So we'll have negative 1 to the first power multiplied by the derivative of the Laplace transform. So we do want to keep in mind that this is the derivative of f of s of our Laplace transform. So let's go ahead and get that written here. So this is going to be equal to that negative multiplied by the Laplace transform of our function e to the 2t cosine of 5t of s. And that's the derivative. And if we go ahead and find that derivative, we will have s minus 2, the derivative if we use our table for this Laplace transform. So we're using 
the table for that. Okay, we will still have to take the derivative uh, once we come up with this. So this is s minus 2 squared plus 5 squared, which is 25. And of course, we still need to take the derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course, we have the quotient rule. And we end up with s minus 2 squared plus 25 minus s minus 2 times 2 times s minus 2, all divided by s minus 2 squared plus 25 all squared. That is our quotient rule. And simplifying that, we come up with s minus 2 squared minus 25 all divided by s minus 2 squared plus 25 all squared. Okay, let's go to our next example. Determine the Laplace transform of e to the 7t multiplied by the sine squared of t. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves of the uh, half angle formula, which would be our trig identity of the sine squared of t is equal to 1 minus the cosine of 2t all over 2. And that's going to really help us. So now let's go ahead and say that we're looking for the Laplace transform of e to the 7t sine squared of t of s. And that's going to be equal to the Laplace transform whoops, of e to the 7t multiplied by 1 minus cosine of 2t divided by 2 of s. And that's equal to 1 half multiplied, and that's our property of our Laplace transform, multiplied by the Laplace transform of e to the 7t of s minus the Laplace transform of e to the 7t cosine of 2t of s. And that was just distributing that e to the 7t to that numerator and then using our uh, linearity uh, principles. Okay, principle. Let's keep going. So now we have 1 half and we will use our table and this is 1 divided by s minus 7 minus s minus 7 all over s minus 7 multiplied Oh, that's squared plus 4 plus 2 squared. And now we will have s minus 7 squared plus 4 minus s minus 7 squared in coming up with our common denominator. And as you can see, we are left with 4 over s minus 7 multiplied by, whoops, s minus 7 squared plus 4. And now that just simplifies very nicely. To 2 divided by s minus 7 multiplied by s minus 7 squared plus 4. This is a really nice uh, example. Um, we're going to find the Laplace transform. Whoops, I wanted to square this off. We're going to find the Laplace transform of cosine nt multiplied by cosine of mt. So we can use our product identity
And so we have here that this is equal to the cosine of n minus m plus the cosine of n plus m. And I need to put that t there. All divided by 2. So we'll be finding the Laplace transform of the cosine of n minus mt plus the cosine of n plus mt all over 2 of s, and that's equal to, we'll go ahead and take that 1 half out, and that's 1 half multiplied by the Laplace transform of the cosine of n minus mt of s plus the Laplace transform of the cosine of n plus m multiplied by t of s. And we can use our table of Laplace transforms and we can see that this is equal to s divided by s squared plus n minus m all squared plus s divided by s squared plus n plus m all squared. And so now, we'll do a little algebra here. Make sure I don't run out of room. Okay, so we have one half multiplied by s times s squared plus n plus m all squared plus s times s squared plus n minus m all squared all over the product of those two denominators. And I can leave some of the simplification, but basically we get 1 half multiplied by s cubed plus and there should be another s in here. Let me just put that in there. So this should have an s in front of all of these. So this would have an s n squared plus 2snm plus sm squared, and again, s cubed plus s n squared, and then it's a minus 2nm, so minus 2smn, and then a plus s m squared all over that same denominator and then you can see here that we are going to have two sn squareds we're going to lose our two smn terms we're going to have two sm squareds and two s cubes. So we'll be able to um, factor that two out and then have that denominator, uh, the two in the denominator cancel. So now we can just go, um, I think right up here. I'll just maybe just continue right here. So now we have one half multiplied by
And here we have 2s cubed plus 2sn squared plus 2sm squared. All over that same denominator. And finally, those twos will cancel, and we come up with s cubed plus sn squared plus sm squared all over that denominator, and that we can factor that s out, and we will have s squared plus n squared plus m squared, all divided by this um, denominator. Okay. And we'll have that there, and I'll just put that up here. Okay, let's take a look at our next problem. Here we're given that the Laplace transform of the cosine of BT is equal to S divided by S squared plus B squared. So we're going to use the translation property to compute the Laplace transform of E to the AT cosine of BT of S. So we have that translation property which was theorem three. So if we're looking uh, for the Laplace transform of E to the AT cosine of BT of S, we have that that's equal to the Laplace transform of our function cosine of the function F of T cosine of BT multiplied, or excuse me, of S minus A. And we have that that's equal to, might be easier to see this, to let u equal, let's do that over here, so that we now have that that's equal to u divided by u squared plus b squared. Well, that's just s minus a divided by s minus a all squared plus b squared. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our next example, starting with the transform L of 1 the transform of 1 of s is equal to 1 over s. We're going to use that formula for derivatives of the Laplace transform to show each one of these transforms. And then by using um, induction, we will uh, be able to um, show this. Okay? So, so we're going to use t to the n is equal to t to the n multiplied by 1 so that we can write our Laplace transform of t to the n of s is equal to negative 1 to the n power multiplied by the derivative and that would be the nth derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of 1, okay? And so now we have that that is equal to
negative 1 to the n, and we will write our Laplace transform of 1 as 1 over s. That nth derivative, and we could always write this as s to the negative 1, and that nth derivative is negative 1 to the n multiplied by negative 1, negative 2, and so forth, all the way to negative n, s to the negative 1 minus n. And then we can simplify that as negative 1 to the n multiplied by negative 1 to the n multiplied by 1 times 2 times dot, 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 all the way to n divided by s to the n plus 1 power. And when we simplify that, we come up with n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1 power. Okay, I think I had something right here. Should have just been another... Okay, show that the Laplace transform of e to the at multiplied by t to the n of s is equal to that expression, n factorial divided by s minus a to the n plus 1 power. Okay. So we'll first do this by using the translation property for f of s. We want to translate that so we have f of t equal to t to the n. So how we'll find that is the Laplace transform of e to the a t multiplied by t to the n of s is equal to the Laplace transform of our function t to the n multiplied by s minus a. And that is equal to n factorial divided by s minus a to the n plus 1 power. And of course, this is for s greater than a. In part b, if we want to use the formula for the derivatives of the Laplace transform, we are going to use that theorem uh, and apply it to the Laplace transform when our function is e to the at, which is of exponential order a. So let's write that down. We will apply the theorem to the Laplace transform of f of t equal to e to the at. And remember, this f of t is of exponential order a. Okay, so let's do that. The Laplace transform of t to the n, e to the at of s is equal to negative 1 to the nth power, we're pretty comfortable with this right now, multiplied by the nth derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of e to the at. There's our f of t of s. And that's equal to negative 1 to the n multiplied by the derivative with respect to s of s minus a to the negative 1 power, and of course that's with respect to s. And now we have that that's equal to negative 1 to the n multiplied by negative 2 see if this is not very clear there, multiplied by, whoops, negative 1, multiplied by negative 2, and so on and so forth, negative n, 
s minus a to the 1 minus n power, and that will simplify to n factorial divided by s minus a to the n plus 1 power, and this is for s greater than a. And that concludes this video.